Here I am. Good morning and welcome to New Day Northwest. Starting off today is a hugely popular actress, writer, internet innovator, and self-proclaimed queen of the geeks. I love this title so much. Embrace Your Weird is the new book from best-selling author Felicia Day, and we're thrilled to have her here this morning. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I love this. In both of your books, you talk about weirdness. What does weirdness mean to you? Uh, to me, I think I, I want to repossess the word weird because I think Thank that you. things that make us stand out in this world are really our strengths in life, and yet throughout our life we're kind of told to suppress them or get rid of them. And my book and kind of my philosophy in life is to just let people know that their individuality as their superpower. Yes, let your flag fly. Um, the other thing that's very generous about this book to me is that you talk about the things that get in your way and in the way of your creativity and in the way of you living your best life. Included in that was anxiety, and I thought you wrote about that, as I said, very generously because lots of people feel this, but they think people like you don't feel this, that you're immune. Well, I kind of live my life in a very public way, in a, in a certain way, and um, to me, if you can make your art personal, that will resonate with other people more, and it's kind of the philosophy of the book, really, like trying to find what makes me different from other people, right. what do I have in my creator toolbox that sets me apart, and how do I channel that into the world in a way that makes me feel seen by myself and other people. How does being female play into this? Because we've thought, you're you know, queen of the geeks, but we've thought of geeks traditionally as guys. Um, weirdness or you know, kind of standing out from the pack was more a, you know, a male accepted thing than a female accepted thing. Maybe not today, but you know, in the last 50 years. So what part does being female play in all of this? I certainly think that um, in the time that I've been on the internet making content, the last 10 years or so, that I think women have a, a much bigger voice in the geek space and it's a lot more even and we're all better for it. But you're absolutely right. I think conformity and putting other people's needs first, mm -hmm. needs of us, for us, um, is a hugely, um, pro it's a big problem with women and we have yeah. to overcome that. And I think, you know, a lot of this is trying to subvert that in a, in a way to really uh, be able to put ourselves first in a way that doesn't feel selfish or won't make us unlikable. You're right, because the minute women get aggressive or put their needs first, they're, they have a lot of labels put on them and I, I really want to push back against that. I think that's a wonderful thing and it is a, subversive is a really good word for this in a pleasant and totally acceptable yeah. <laughs> sort of way. I mean, like, I, I didn't read it and go, oh my God, I'm shocked, I can't do that. It was more inviting me to, you know, not spend my whole life making other people comfortable, which is what we tend to do. Yeah, I don't think it's a channeling like, oh, I'm gonna burn something down. It's just really be right. about, I mean, I love that too, but for my book, it's really <laughs> about uh, a, a gentleness and generosity and confidence in who we are right. and the ability to put that forward into the world in a way that we know will make ourselves happier and other people happier as well. That's such an interesting point because you kind of invite us to occupy our space without having to get really angry to do it. You know, just mm -hmm. do it because we're full human beings. Yeah, it's about feeling steady and sure inside and really, you know, it's I've had a lot of rejection in my life as an actor and an artist, you get that a lot. And this is about kind of uh, developing that sense of self that you can, yeah, you're gonna get knocked around a little bit in life, but you can always come back to that baseline of being true to yourself and I feel like that's so much more fulfilling than just running around trying to be everything to everybody else. Right, it's exhausting. It is, very exhausting. <laughs> it is exhausting. Um, you talk about some mantras that you use and some techniques that you use. Um, are there any that you think you could share or that other people might be able to benefit from? I mean, really, the, the core of the book is not only about like embracing your individuality, but in, embracing the work of creativity in your life. Because I think we talk about self-care a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that often we are like, oh, I need to have a self-care day. I'm going to get a manicure. I'm going to get a pedicure. I'm going to get my hair done. So we talk about the externals of ourselves, which are great if they are for us, but often our externals are for other people anyway, right. especially as women. I never feel that much better after those no. kinds of days. <laughs> I hate a manicure, believe me, it'll never happen. Um, but for me, self-care is creativity. Creativity, whatever it is, like whether you're a knitter or a mm -hmm. writer or an artist or whatever hobby or creative profession that you decide to embark upon, making sure that the, wor the daily work, the consistent work of the creativity is in your life is so important because then your inner creator knows it's getting out of you. It's, it has a voice and you're right. acknowledging that it needs to be cared for and nurtured. And I think that's where we feel steadiest and more fulfi most fulfilled. And you feel like that applies to everybody, right? We don't all need to have five million followers on Instagram no, or whatever no, no. <laughs> to experience creativity in our lives. No, not at all. I even have a section here on fan art, taking other people's creativity and using it as sort of a, a jumping off point to make your own things. 
Like to me, I think we're in a world where we're always constantly inputting other people's uh, creativity and um, expression and consumption. We're just consuming other people's um, stuff. And we don't really give ourselves, especially just on social media, we don't give ourselves time to reflect who we are mm -hmm. or be able to really put ourselves out in the world. And there's an exercise, it is a workbook. So it is uh, kind of a self-help interactive workbook because right. I love being interactive with my fans. And we go back and forth with exercises and me talking and relaying, sharing uh, information. And one of them is uh, really just being able to take time, take one evening out and consume other people's content. Yeah. And then take an evening and make something. Where do you feel better? What makes you feel more steady in this mm. life and happier? And I think, you know, you don't have to drop everything to become a professional, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, model builder. But just having a, a portion of that in your life on a consistent basis, I, I feel makes us all a little bit happier. And whatever it is, it's cool. Right? Exactly. I mean, no, whatever you can, that is for you. Cosplay. You could do, you know, whatever kind of knitting, baking. I mean, really, a, a lot of the first book, is, uh, part of the book, is about finding finding an outlet. What is going to really make me happy in a way that's not just about externals? Again, um, yeah, everybody wants to write a novel, but your goal shouldn't be, I want to be a bestseller. I want, uh, the goal should be like, I just want to get my perspective on life out there a little bit every day. I'll write a page. I'll do exactly. an essay, Five something. Five minutes a day. That, that's really, all you I'm need. I'm a big believer in the one step at a time thing. And so I hear this also in connection with social media, that there's something to be applied there. How, how do you look at that? Yeah, I mean, as somebody who's built her career on social media, it's a little ironic that I say in the beginning <laughs> of the book, please just try to limit yourself. Um, but I think going back to your point where we're really taught to be good and likable, like we literally have a like measure of ourselves, a little heart or yep. a little thumbs up underneath our expressions of ourselves ourselves and I have to tell you having made thousands of videos I feel that acutely where you start to leave yourself and only be in service of other people in order mm -hmm. for them to like you we have a physical manifestation of that in online and right. I think it's very destructive I kind of uh, I have an analogy where it's like we're sitting in a car and we start papering the uh, the windows with pretty pictures of ourselves and eventually we papered it all and yet we're still alone inside the car unseen and, and other people are seeing us the way we want them to see us. That's but a not, good analogy. Yeah. There's been some thought about eliminating like buttons on some platforms. What do you think about that? I mean, I love it. As someone whose profession is a little bit tied to that, I don't know how that will work, but I'm, I'm fine <laughs> moving on. I'm fine moving on from that because right. honestly, it's been the most... The, the most fulfilling things I've made on the internet, the, the series, uh, the videos, everything, has been that I know that somebody has taken a part of it and put it in their lives, whether they love tabletop games or they're a gamer and they feel more confident that I've shown them that mm -hmm. it's fun to be a gamer. Um, but really, those like buttons are so self-destructive and when you get caught up in it, you really leave yourself and start to fashion yourself in a very, like I said, hollow way. What will other people like of me? I could talk about my book a lot online, but if I pose a pretty picture of me with a celebrity, I'll get a lot more likes. Yeah, Is that enough. where I want the direction of my life to go necessarily? It's a slippery slope. Yeah, and we want our inside and our outside to match. Does that make sense? No, I mean, absolutely. That's that's, that's the core it. of what this book is about, really. Like we we can pay attention to the externals. That is important to function in life because we are kind of superficial species. <laughs> but at the well, same we time, we are. Yeah. But then civilization helps us to exactly. deal with that and bring it bring it to balance. Yeah. So this book is really about how how to balance that and be self assured that if someone rejects you because of something you show on the outside um, that was inside, that's okay to reject that person to not like you you will find other people to right. come into your life that will like the genuine you as well. I love it so much. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank really you. appreciate it. Uh, Felicia is doing a University Bookstore event tomorrow night at 7 at the University Temple United Methodist Church. And of course, her book, Embrace Your Weird, is out now. Go get it. When we come back, new music from Polsbo's Lamolo after this. <laughs>